What's up everyone, I'm Alex, and today I'll be speaking to you guys about like such a very interesting interesting question which you just saw obviously on the main title. And I'll be doing it by first of all introducing you to two philosophers that I found extremely interesting when researching this vastly deep subject. And then I'll try to convince you why you could and should become a philosopher. Alright, so stick around because I have a very, very good um, answer to that. God is dead. He remains dead and we have killed him. Frederick Nietzsche. He was an angry German scholar who got tired of basically, tired of humans. That's the best way I think I could describe it. He hated his mom and sister. He was rejected by all women. And when he was 44, he got a mental breakdown because of a horse. Yes, a horse. However, he is still one of the great philosophers of the 19th century. How, Alex? Well, he wrote on how to become a superman, or in German, an, German a Ubermensch, and, and discover who we really are. He was, he was a bit, you know, and he decided he's going to openly express how much he hates Christianity. His favorite person in the New Testament was Pontius Pilate, the guy who got Jesus crucified. On the surface, the guy seems absolutely crazy. I mean, he could have got himself killed, but his insane mind created some fantastic and fascinating work. Let's look at God is dead. On the surface, it seems like he just wanted to piss off some Christians, right? But he had a good reason for saying so. He believed that envy is not necessarily a negative emotion the same way Christianity portrays it to be as this, this evil thing. Nietzsche writes that Envy should be used as a guide to what we really want. We should use it as a motivator and we should not hide it, compress it because the same way like any other emotions like happiness and excitement, basically the positive ones, the negative ones should be treated the same way. They are also emotions. That's kind of the reason why he just he wasn't a fan of Christianity, but don't get me wrong. I love religion. I really do. I was brought up a Catholic myself and I, and I'm happy. I truly am happy because I think it gives you and builds the right moral compass for you. I mean, it's fantastic for us as a species as well. It helped us to survive for thousands of years. I mean, 84% of the world is still religious. That's a huge, huge number. We are social creatures and it helped us to unite and advance as a civilization, which is ultimately a good thing. But you see, a man like Nietzsche helps us to find flaws in belief systems. And that's also extremely significant. And this is why we need philosophy. We get comfortable with what we know. Asking the right questions will challenge the basics of life and check if what we believe in is in fact something we should believe in. That's key. This is what Nietzsche called the re-evaluation of values. The people that find courage to, to re-evaluate their values are as what he deems the Ubermenschers or the supermen and women of the civilization or our generation. But enough on the angry German man, okay? Let's talk about another cool branch of philosophy and it's called natural philosophy. This is where science comes from, so you know, everyone respect the thing because it's extremely important. Um, and in this branch of philosophy, there was this famous French philosopher named René Descartes. And he had this famous quote saying, what was it? Oh, I think, therefore I am. Extremely elegant. We might, I have to give claps to the French people. And in the narrow world, most philosophers used the axiom of God to explain their philosophical concepts René used logic. He was guided by definitions, clear thinking and sound arguments. He concluded that a large factor behind our human failures like war and conflict are due to just the utter confusion and illogical decisions. Most people are not equipped for thinking. If you remember in my last video about maths, we're just we're all kind of dumb. Some people are less dumb than others. Um, but. He found that to tackle a problem, one must segment his problems into smaller pieces. 
See, before psychology was even found, this man was already like, able to establish these ideas. It's absolutely insane. There was no psychology, but this man was able to figure this out. Like, how? <laughs> yes, he was the guy who found about how one should make decisions and understood that logic and intuition are distinctly different. And philosophy didn't exist back then. I just have to highlight that. I see philosophy as a as a factory of ideas, both good and bad. You know, we had Marxism. You know, it was found by these two guys called Lenin and Stalin. I started reading up on Marx and I was like, oh, what a brilliant idea. Let's create the Soviet Union. A few years later down the line, 20 million people plus dead. Not the right philosophy, right? But there's also Stoicism. And, you know, I really love Stoicism. I'll probably make another video just on it because it's changed my life. And not it's not 100% correct, don't get me wrong, but it has so many things which are still relatable today, even though they were written back in, like, ancient Rome. So, big up, Marcus Aurelius. Um, and it's also, fun fact, it's also inspired a lot of Christian beliefs, that's why they, they combine really nicely. Let me get into the next topic, and it's, we can all be philosophers. All you need to do is ask the right questions. That's all. However, a good philosopher, what he does is he uses the correct methodology in doing so. And this is key. We should all want to be good philosophers so that we don't waste our time dwelling on things that are not worth our effort. Time is our most valuable resource. For now, it's not something that can be created, reverse, destroyed. It just is. It's this extremely amazing dimension that we we haven't fully figured out yet. I mean, maybe we'll be able to go back in time in a thousand years, but for now, we can't. So make the best use of it. Every good and bad habit you undergo, relationship you have, or book you read, it requires time. And... Philosophy personally has helped me be more critical of these habits, relationships, and books that I read. I look at someone like Nietzsche. He went above and beyond to crack down some of the hidden mysteries of European habits, which came from the Bible, and we all should too. But like on the local scale, focusing on ourselves, where cognition is our sacred text, where all these ideologies and morals are stored if you delve deep enough you'll vividly see that some of the things that you hold are not what actually resonates with you and this realization will give you this better sense of what you, what you actually believe in most people in the western world don't believe in what they believe but what their families friends and nations believe in and let me just reiterate this is not your belief millions of people enjoy this silent tug of war and the only way to cut your rope is to ask yourself this, these fundamental questions, this, especially the simple ones, which are most mundane to you. But this is obviously very hard. We are attached to ideas the same way we are attached to our friends and families and even our favorite ring. But we are biologically wired for attachment as it helped us to survive. So it's not really your fault. Us homo sapiens are at the top of the food chain now, actually. Circumstances have changed, but our biology has not. For this reason, most of you watching this video will not go and open Marcus Aurelius's meditations, as the resistance encoded within your DNA is much bigger than your will to improve. And that's for most of you. But that's also why there's only a small percentage of people which are actually successful and become millionaires. Because only those small people actually withstand the resistance. Well, the truth is, every single one of us will go through some, some, some type of existential crisis at some point. This is this large wave of emotion that will come by, with you come and millions of questions flying by, and it's usually catalyzed by a very traumatic event. As a result, some people fall into, you know, deep depression, alcohol, drugs, decomposition in their bed, and then they just die or something. You know, we hear it all the time on the news, it's, it's everywhere. You can have a better approach and a, a constructive one like this famous rapper as we probably all have heard the kid Leroy, who as we all know had an extremely successful album after such a bad 
breakup. <laughs> it was no, I, seriously though, it did it did seem like the guy was really heartbroken. I really do feel him. I can say from personal experience. <laughs> he is a very good example of why bad events are not actually bad. I mean, I can be a hundred percent sure if I was to go up to him right now and be like, yo. If you were to go back in time and had the choice to stay with this woman, would you? He would 100% say no. 100%. So, without this breakup, this album wouldn't exist, right? So was the breakup so bad? Was it? So the ultimate reason to why we need philosophy is actually, it's actually very simple. And it's to get through life just a bit easier. You know, it's already so, so hard and... Don't make it harder for yourself. Go and educate yourself on the fundamentals of logic and reason, ethics, metaphysics, and so much more. All of these branches, and you have a mu you have much better resources to get through all the the harshness and pain and suffering that life has to offer. That's why. If you guys enjoyed my video, I would appreciate if you guys could hit the subscribe button, hit a like. Otherwise, I'll be depressed and. I'll be sad crying in my bed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it for watching.